few weeks ago, some folks more accustomed to hard hats and assembly lines got involved in Toledo schools. And they showed the Toledo Board of Education and its teachers union a new way to do business, and they helped prevent a teacher's strike. NBC 24's Matt Lockwood has more. Local unions became visibly involved with talks at a school board meeting on February 24th. It was after their show of force that school board members asked union leaders for help. It is very unusual to see another organization of similar composition enter into it. Once involved, the UAW began explaining how it now resolves problems with Chrysler, Ford, and GM, which is by putting together joint teams consisting of management and union reps that are responsible for critical issues such as product quality. If the board and the TFT's tentative agreement is approved, their joint teams will also include parents. Since everyone is empowered by this and accountable because of this, it, it gives them the chance to look at a different perspective. UT labor expert Chuck Weinblatt says if the UAW model is to work for Toledo schools, each school is going to need their own joint team and some training from the UAW. They really do have this um, ability to teach both sides how to solve problems, not on a personal level, but on a professional level. Solving problems will begin with putting aside hard feelings. In Toledo, Matt Lockwood, NBC 24 News. The teachers union will vote on the tentative agreement on Tuesday, and then the school board has its vote on Thursday. From Toledo 11, the news channel, this is Roundtable. And thank you for staying with us this morning. We have heard uh, so far what the business thinks about labor management relations and what labor thinks. But what about those people directly involved in the talks between the two sides? Chuck Weinbland is an expert on labor management relations, and Patrick Johnson is an attorney who represents employers in negotiations. They both join us this morning to uh, fill in some of the blanks. And often it's said that the truth lies somewhere between. So hopefully with the two of you, we will get an even clearer picture of, of what labor uh, is like today and the, the health of labor in 1998. Let me ask you first about this widespread notion that labor is slowly dying. So many people I talk with tell me that, that labor has uh, lost its clout and is not going to get it back in the kind of work uh, force, the work environment that exists today. Do you agree with that or not? No, I don't. Labor management uh, relations are uh, but they're basically not a, a, an issue that can be solved one side can't win. It's a paradox. It's a situation which um, one side becomes very strong and powerful, and uh, because of that, the other side eventually uh, will feel weak and need to be greater represented. So we're looking right now at a, at a time when unions in general, uh, with a few exceptions, are fairly weak. But that will change. Um, corporate policy today dictates that they have one responsibility only, and that's to turn the best profit they can for their stockholders. So for any publicly held company, um, they'll do whatever they need to do to make a good profit. Sometimes that includes some unfavorable decisions, and that's why we need labor unions. I think it was Oscar Bunch a moment ago who said that labor will come back, but it will come back with a different face. Do you agree with that? What, what will be different about labor? Well, strategically, labor unions today, mature labor unions, understand that they must force management to accept them as a partner. Mm -hmm. They have to make strategic decisions together. It's really the only way that a labor union can gain power. And I think that's what will happen in the resurgence in the next five years or so, is labor unions will force management to accept them uh, as strategic partners for critical issues like quality and productivity. Are the critical issues today the critical issues that existed 10, 15 years ago? Talk to me a little about uh, the interest of both parties and how those manifest themselves at the negotiating table. Well, the interests today are completely different. The, the issues are, uh, we live in a global marketplace today, and companies can't afford to, um, to pay exorbitant rates to their employees. Uh, it'll put themselves out of business. So it's a very, very difficult lane to travel in these days. And uh, all, that's all the more reason why unions must partner with management. There are lots of new issues that really constrict the ability of companies to, um, to gain market share and profit. There's so much small business today, so many jobs being generated in smaller business environments. What is that doing to organized labor? Is there a future for organized labor in that kind of work environment? Difficult. Most large labor unions don't really seek out members in smaller organizations. 
Lots of smaller companies are also not manufacturing related where, where there are lots of strengths. Um, and it's a very, very difficult um, uh, situation for labor unions to become more powerful in smaller markets. Right now, they seem to be devoting most of their attention to organizing larger companies, especially larger manufacturing companies. Your cohort here hasn't said a word. Any thoughts about that? I agree with everything he said. <laughs> um, I, I think that there are, uh, organization does occur in some smaller businesses, but I think generally that's generated because one of the employees has some background or family that's union oriented, goes to a union and seeks their help as opposed to the unions actively pursuing the smaller business. Um, from my standpoint, uh, sitting in a room uh, with my client, uh, usually the employer, uh, and on the other side of the table is the union, I think Chuck put it very well. The ideal is <clears throat> we're operating from an equal strength uh, with skilled people. Uh, the, the hardest part you know what our goal is. Our goal is to seek resolution. Uh, there was a lot of talk about strike with the, the prior people who were here. <clears throat> no one wins. And I think we would all agree with that. And There's no winners in a strike. You yeah. think both sides are more aware of that today? Absolutely. How then do you explain the kind of uh, very antagonistic situation we're seeing in Flint, Michigan right now? Well, yeah, and I, I don't know whether Chuck would agree with me or not, but I think if you take a look at labor, uh, labor unions in particular, and management, we, we sort of work from a, a posture of long-term goal. Mm -hmm. uh, we look down the road. What impact is this going to have three years, five years, ten years down the road? I think the rank and file, and it's a difficulty that unions have to deal with, are sort of a uh, uh, instant gratification. They're looking at an issue that needs to be resolved right away. Emotions run high. And so, consequently, you have these, these strikes. Remember, Flint, Michigan is, receives the notoriety that it does because the domino effect is taking sure. place. If this sure. was limited to Flint, Michigan, I'm not sure that, that we'd be all as concerned. But it's, we're, we're almost out of time here, but very quickly, I have to ask you uh, about the, the antagonistic nature uh, of negotiations, of, of the relationship between the two. The push buttons, the, the corporate downsizing, the outsourcing, those sorts of things that tend to trigger strikes or threats of strikes, those still exist and still will exist in the next few years of business in America. What does that do to the relationship? Again, we're almost out of time, but are we going to see more or less of an antagonistic kind of relationship? The issues change. We went through this horrible circumstance with health care. I mean, it was causing incredible problems for both unions and management. We knew we had to solve it, but it was a real hot button. There will be other hot buttons, but we'll resolve those hot buttons the same way we resolve the ones that have gone on in the past, when we fell behind in wages because of the economy, when we had problems with health insurance. We've, we've attacked those by not trying to work with a preconceived solution, but taking to... a look at the problem and then solving it. Thank you very much, folks. I appreciate your input. Thank you for being with us today.